sing a couple of songs off the new album. But what, what defines the word parking? See? Yeah. So no one can really define that word, parking. Being a park and being a family as well is um, a big responsibility. Not only for the parkies, but as a community as well. That's what it's all about in the park there. You know, that's, that's, that's the opportunities they get. They're, they're restricted opportunities. to do a marshal all the time when we're called, when we're needed. So it's not unusual to see a big crowd for us. Most of the musicians we already know from um, years back, like Archie and Ruby and Andy Alberts and Peter Rodimer and that, they're all original parkies. And that's something that showed people that you don't have to drink in a park or take drugs. You can do something with your life and that's how these people started off. Shows people that the parkies are not just alcoholic or drug affected. When they know they've got a job to do, they will do it. And it shows a lot of people that they have got responsibility and they have got respect and especially for themselves, and it gives them self-esteem. Um, and it also shows the other parties that they can do this as well, or anybody can do it. From the album, eh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got Dugo sitting up on top. Oh, is he? I can't see him. Yeah. yeah. Up the top. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Kathleen Hudson. I'm 47 years of age. I live in Collingwood. 
I've been interacting with Collingwood Fitzroy Smith Street since the day I was born. This is our main meeting place. Years and years ago, it used to be up, up, it used to be up the top end, across the road from the old health service. They used to be, but now it's down here because it's more cosy down here. Majority of us live down this area and we're all comfortable here. Before the, the parks, there was lanes and no one knows that. I only just found this out 18 months ago myself. If you wasn't out of town and you had to go there, you punched on for that fucking right. You're right. You punched on for your right and that, your spot in that lane. And I can say, if you say, this is sacred down here, Collingwood. You can go sit there, have a drink, and you know what? Nothing was put on the table. It was all put in the centre. Change, money, smokes, grog, food, what was ever there belonged to everybody. No, that's not yours. That's not yours. That's not. That belongs to everybody. And that's the way it was. I grew up in um, Collingwood, Collingwood Fitzroy, at uh, Commission Flats with my mummy auntie called Frances Mabel Arden. Yeah, me and my brother Wally Arden, Jr. Frances was my you know, mum, Frances, sorry, was um, my father's sister, older sister. Yeah, uh, my father was the youngest of seven. I never really got to see much of him. I knew of him, and uh, but that's what made me search more, to get to know him, you know? But I really never sat down. And we knew each other, you know? He knew me, and, and I started getting to know him, you know? But we never sat down, you know? Like, you know, like having a dad, you know? I suppose because he didn't have that. He become a parky. I think he went, you know, like every, all our mob go, you know, they go searching. They go searching for whatever that searching is within us to make us feel complete. Young bloke myself, I, I ended up in, in um, you know, I brought up, brought up uh, away from my family by foster parents. But when I <coughs> found my family, they most of them lived in Fitzroy and Collingwood. One gentleman was, uh, one fellow name was um, Wally Arden, Wally Amos Arden, or Wallace, but we called him Amos and uh, Amos Arden, and that, that, that's Davy, that's David Arden's uh, father. We used to see Davey and his brother David and his brother Wally. His, his brother's name was Wally too. They used to be running around or you know running around um, Collingwood. Yeah, and um, I, I remember him. You know, if ever they got in a strife or they took off, his aunties because his aunties brought him up. You know, one auntie in particular, and uh, they'd always come looking for him. Have you seen? Have you seen Davey and Wally? And me and Laura say, Nah, nah, we never saw him uh, because we knew it was going to happen. You know. We didn't want to see them kids get get a kick, but yeah, what's it? I see, I hear you. I know that you're there. I feel I hear you. The wounds of your heart, yeah. Because at this time I was about 14, you know, 14, 15, you know, well, yeah, 14, 13, 14, you know. So you're a young kid, you know, and you start to, you know, being the old, I was the oldest. 
No, my brother was younger than me. And so, you know, you know, many times, you know, and we never knew our mother, you know. So many times I cried for mum, you know. Uh, I think we done it in 2005 and it was um, a project um, funded by the City of Yarra Council and Arts Victoria. So, well, first of all you've got uh, Bunzel, which is our creator. You've got the caves uh, representing the uh, spirits on both sides, male and female. That little star up there represents uh, Jupiter when it came over at the time. The magpie represents the Wurundjeri uh, markings, their totem, and it also represents uh, each time we do a uh, painting, uh, we put a magpie there uh, just to say that it's been done in Collingwood. The galahs, they represent the, uh, the traders who, uh, over the years and still do, uh, uh, make anonymous phone calls to have those fellas removed because they're saying they're running, running them out of business, which they're not. They sit on the, on the corner up Smith Street. They're not in anyone's way. Of, preventing them from making a profit in their shops. A lot of them are homeless. A lot of them from stolen generation, they get out of you know, institutions, jail, you know, uh, boys' homes, girls' homes, and they've got nowhere to go. They've got no family to, to, to reach out to, so they come to the park because they know they're gonna get a connection to someone who they know somewhere along the line. That's what it's all about in the park there. You know? that's, that's, that's the opportunities they get. They're, they're restricted opportunities. I mean. You walk around here, everyone else has got a job. Doesn't matter what nationality they are. These fellas haven't, but they lived there all their life, you know? That's more understanding than, than respected, you know? A lot of people, they've already got respect. It's more understanding how people interpret what their lives are about and how people see them. Instead of looking through a glass window, you're looking at actual people there. That's more about understanding what they've been through. Now, see this tree up here? This tree up here, this is for all our lost parkies, the ones we've all lost. And that little tree there is our memorial. And my husband fixed that up. All of us have all put a little something there to our memory for the ones that have passed on. And I've heard on the grapevine that the Tongans are asking up about it. But that's our little private, our little private memorial where we can mourn for the ones that used to sit here. And I mean literally sit here, even at that, that, chair, at that tree there, you know. And that's our little memorial spot. And we're proud of it. And every special occasion could be someone's birthday that we remember. We all, someone always gives a bunch of flowers and we decorate it all and everything. I come down here with just my own family, just to have a barbecue, just a time out with me and my children. But no, you see, if you the mob come along. Okay. But you know what? The mob gets in there, because I make sure I've got plenty of tucker. I go, oh, no, they're going to turn up. <laughs> no, we all have enough having a barbecue together, we do. We make sure all the babies are fed first, and then when the babies are fed, we say, come on, no, you fellas, you want to feed? The other kids are being fed, they're going to have yourselves now. We know you're hungry, look at your drooling from the mouth there. <laughs> now we have good times down, we all have good times. When the tribe and the community is dismantled, all them things that build the foundation of a family ship is dismantled too. So singly, we have to try to pick that back up, you know, and try to build them foundations again. And that's what I do with my family, you know. There's so many tracks, you know, and pathways, I call them, you know? You know, and I was on this pathway. You know, you know, back in my early days, I was on this pathway. That was the wrong pathway. And I was lucky that music came along, you know? But through music and songwriting, it appealed to me, because I, I listened to the words and I go, wow, this is, I like this, I feel, really good about this, you know, as a human being, you know.
But it had been for all the time that I played with Bart, Uncle Bart Willoughby, I didn't know he was a male relation. So back in Collingwood, when I took that journey to go and meet him, and the albums would come to me, he was my mother's cousin. And I never knew that. So them elders are there. They were throwing things at me, you know. Yeah, yeah I'm a Victorian, Gundijmara, but also South Australian. Google the pigeon jar, you know. My third youngest brother, you know, I met, was Gavin Wangany, you know, before he went to Essendon, you know, you know and become who he is today, you know. To watch him become who he was, the Brownlow medalist, the grand final, made me, what is it, achieve, you know, yeah. And actually, a little brother doing it, you know, go, wow, that's deadly, I'm gonna, well, I'll do my best, you know? Yeah. I met up with Arnold Smith. He, he sang songs like um, Aboriginal Children and uh, Stop Ringing Those Submission Bells. And, uh, he's, a, he's from Broome. And uh, I loved his music, you know. So I ended up playing lead guitar. My first job as a lead guitarist, you know. And um, played with him for a long time, you know, for six months. And I ended up coming, we ended up, we and Vi took the big travel across the Nullarbor all the way back to Melbourne and um, I got back in Melbourne and then um, my brother gave me a ring, my little brother Wally, you know, and um, he rang and just said, uh, I've met mum, you know, we've met our mother, I've met our mother, you know. He was on the verge of taking a young fellow over to meet his mother, you know, little brother, another and I uh, end up meeting our mother. And by this time she's got, you know, she got married again and um, she had four other kids. So we just realised we had four other siblings, you know? Uh, so me and uh, five could come with me and, so we packed up and moved over to Adelaide to meet her, you know? Brothers and sisters. And it's an emotional thing, you know? Yeah. I sat there with my mum and, uh, She couldn't look me in the eyes, you know. It's a hard thing, you know. You know, she was 16, 15, she says, when she went on the search to find her own mother, and, you know. And she, she told me a story these days, you know. About grandfather, you know, grandfather, grandma, you know. Up in, you know, up in Gugatha country, you know, up in, you know, Port Lincoln, Port Pierce, and how yeah, they used to grab, grab all the mob and put them on trucks and take them to the homes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I just, that's why I started understanding, you know? Actually, she had a damn, you think I've had it hard, you know? You know at least we had an auntie, mummy who looked after us, you know? You know, and, um, yeah. I started to understand about her life, you know, you know, and what she went through, you know. Yeah. Our family, very important. If I didn't have Violet, 
who's helped me through my youth, you know. Yeah, she's a deadly mother. She, she keeps us all together. I mean, now we're from that one child, we've got four children, you know. You know, and now, just recently, we've got our first grandson, you know. We're just, we're just human beings, you know. We're brothers and sisters who, you know, stick together and stay together. Like I said, we're not all related, but we all have that family structure and that family unit that we want to be a part of. Where some of these poor darlings, which I know where I've spoken to them personally, don't have that family structure. And this is why we are all here and gather where, where we gather. So family, I mean, that's, that's important, you know. For, for me now is to get all that back, I suppose. You know, for my kids to know who they are, their identity, you know. Uh, to know all their mom, to know where they come from, to know where their great-grandfather's great-grandmother come from, to, you know. I think that's the key now, where, you know, we're learning more about that as we get older, you know. No matter how old we are, we are still learning, and there are still a lot of unanswered questions. What the Koori community needs to ask and this and that. We're all the same, no matter what colour we are. We all shit the same, we all bleed the same, we all sneeze the same. We're all breathing the same fucking air. And that's the way it is. And that's, that's my story. <laughs> Hey, my son, you, <laughs> you're making noise, my big boy. Can you tell us a bit about how you done this mural, when you done the mural, and what it took to, for it to be completed? Certainly. Can we uh, done it with a paintbrush? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I found out who I'm related to and that, and where you shouldn't go and all these capers, you know, what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about these capers? <laughs> and I look at the camera and say that. I love being black and that's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a furry and I'm proud of it. Yeah. I think there's CDs here if you want to buy them. 
So I mean, well, I can go out for pictures tonight. Keep on clapping for Lee Morgan, eh? Cuz, eh? Your cousin.